All right, it's three weeks after I graduated college and I started my first real job. I was trying to become a financial planner. I showed up for a few weeks of training and then the company essentially sent me off to find all the millionaires I knew and ask them if I could invest their money. There was one problem. I didn't know any millionaires. That should have been the moment I realized that that job was not for me, but I stuck with it. I didn't want to deal with all the feelings of failure that came along with not making a career that I had chosen work out. So welcome to week three of our stretch series. Um, have you ever looked back on something and thought, what was I thinking? I should have just given that up. That was true for me. I should have cut my losses and walked away from that job. Um, I knew I never would succeed in it. And eventually I did walk away from that job after a few months of continuously failing. And thankfully, I found my way into my current job where I've been fairly successful, but I look back on that period of my life and I wish I had just been wise enough to let the job go sooner. Um, it really prevented me from moving into a successful career. However, and in the big picture of life, starting my current career a few months late wasn't a huge deal. Um, but I think we've all had these things in our lives that we wanted so badly, but actually they held us back. Maybe it was a video game system that ended up taking up all your study time. Maybe it was a cute guy or cute girl that ended up being a dud. Um, and you look back and you realize, even though I thought it was great for me at the time, it ultimately held me back. While jobs and grades and relationships are important, I think most of us would agree that it would be an even bigger deal if something was holding us back um, spiritually because ultimately that means something's keeping us from following Jesus as closely as we can. The past two weeks, we've focused on stretching our faith by doing something. However, this week, we are going to consider how we can stretch our faith by letting something go. So we are going to look at a scripture in Hebrews 12, but first I want to give you a little context. Actually, we don't know for sure who penned this book of the Bible, but this book in the New Testament focuses on helping early Christians keep their faith focused on Jesus. In chapter 11, the author lists characters of the Old Testament who are faithful to God. These people didn't know how things would turn out, but they persevered by trusting God. And as we begin reading, the author references the people in those stories. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, all those great examples from chapter 11, we let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. So have you ever been entangled or constricted? I used to love running. I ran cross country and track in high school and college, did steeplechase, did um, triathlons and distance races. In fact, I was training for a marathon shortly after um, Beth and I got married and I got hurt. Um, I hurt my calf. So I took some time off, rested, and when I got back to running again, hurt my calf again. In fact, I kept hurting it over and over, and I tried everything. Um, ice baths, heat, stretch, yoga, lifting weights, different shoes, compression sleeves, nothing worked. Instead, it got worse, a lot worse. Um, started hurting both calves. Um, I even started hurting them when I wasn't running. I would be walking around and I'd hurt them. One time I was climbing a ladder to change a light bulb and the calf locked up on me. Ends up causing pain for multiple days. So I ended up going into the doctor to see why I kept pulling muscles in my calves. And she said, it wasn't because I was pulling a muscle in my calf. Instead, instead my calves were being constricted. Um, the tissues that surround my calf muscles are called fascia. They were no longer stretching and expanding for some reason. And whenever I'd walk or run or climb a ladder, um, additional blood flow would go into the calves to help with the physical activity, but there wasn't enough room inside this fascia um, for the muscle and the extra blood. So the pressure would build up and build up until eventually the nerve inside my leg would crush. And um, there was a lot of severe pain. So she said the, fascia was constricting my calves and until they did something about it they would never be able to be free and stretch and grow 
This is exactly what the author is talking about with our spiritual lives. There are things in our lives that are keeping us from growing and stretching our faith. And unless we are willing to act like the surgeon and cut those things out of our lives, um, our spiritual lives will be stuck, entangled, and entrapped. We need to identify the sin in our life that entangles us and throw it off, cut it away, get rid of it. And don't get me wrong, my surgery wasn't fun. I couldn't stand or walk for weeks. I had to have people roll me from the car to get into the house after my surgery. And if we're gonna be honest, I learned the hard way that I couldn't even stand long enough to use the bathroom. But eventually, I was able to use crutches and after a lot of physical therapy, I was finally freed from the problem that was holding me back. We'll talk more about this, but we know sin traps us and we have to be willing to cut it out of our lives to stretch our faith. Before we read further, I wanna look at verse one again. It says, throw off everything that hinders us in our sin. Other translations say, throw off the weights in sin. It makes a distinction between weights and sin. I think most of us understand the sin. But what is this other thing the author is referencing when he says, throw off the weights that hinder you? The author is encouraging us to remove anything from our lives that keep us from, uh, moving closer to God, even if it isn't necessarily sin. For instance, there have been multiple times in my life that I had to consciously cut down on the amount of stuff on my calendar. I was too busy and I, it wasn't because I thought being busy was a sin, it's not. It was affecting my ability to connect with God and do the things God was calling me to do. So I had to intentionally get rid of the things that bogged down my schedule. I don't know what things hinder your relationship with Jesus. Maybe it's a person you follow on social media who you compare yourself to and makes you question the person God made you to be. Maybe you base your self-worth on your grades and performance and not on the value God ascribed to you. Maybe there is a particular friend whose actions, comments, and mindset distract you and leads you away from Christ. No matter what it is, whether it's a sin or not, if it's keeping you from honoring and trusting God, then we should throw it off. It is hindering us and holding us back. I know it's uncomfortable to challenge yourself like this, but what in your life is hindering you spiritually? Take a second to consider it. Hit pause and pray, uh, pray about it if you need to. While some of you may have taken that question seriously and truly considered what you need to let go of, I know some of you probably did not. And I don't think it's because you're a bad Christian. I know some of you don't even want to consider the question because you've done something like this before. You realized you were stuck in sin or you wanted to change something to improve your relationship with God, so you committed to letting it go, but soon afterwards, you failed. You were sin uh, right back to sinning and doing all the same hindrances uh, you were doing before. Now, you feel stuck. You don't want to consider the question of what do I need to let go of in my life because you don't want to feel the failure and defeat again. Trust me, I get it, I've been there a hundred times. But this passage gives us some practical teaching on how to actually let go of those hindrances. If you've ever tried to make a change to improve your relationship with Jesus, but you feel like you failed, focus in. I genuinely believe many Christians fail at overcoming their sin because they don't follow the principle this next verse teaches us. So. We're going to read verse one again, but this time we'll continue on. Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. And let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us, fixing our eyes on Jesus, the pioneer and protector of our faith. I think a lot of time we hear these verses and it sounds like fluff. Yeah, 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 throw off sin, go running, focus on Jesus. But there is actually an amazing principle in this verse that if you're not looking for it, you might miss. 
See, so many of us have tried to stop sinning before, but we couldn't. Why? We tried to stop like it was some version of self-improvement. We read our little self-help book, then used our self-discipline to improve our lives, manage our sin, and uh, to just really look better to everyone else. But if you haven't figured it out yet, that doesn't work, trust me. Instead, when you commit to throwing off a hindrance, you should run with perseverance. The author is giving us a hint that this isn't going to be easy, nor will it be a short thing, an overnight thing, but he goes on to say, run with perseverance, the race marked out for us, fixing your eyes on Jesus. Guys, I know when I treat sin like it's just some bad habit that I need to work on to improve myself, I simply just try to stop doing the sin and I fail because I miss this principle. This verse is saying we should stop sinning but it goes on to say, when you stop sinning, make sure you start doing what you're supposed to. Do everything God laid out for you, but most of all, fix your eyes on Jesus. Some of you may still feel like this isn't practical advice, but stick with me for another minute. If your parents have ever taken away your phone or they've made you reduce the amount of time you spend on your phone, what is the one thing that you think about? What is the one thing you wish you could do? Spend time on your phone. The thing that you're being denied consumes you. All the, it consumes you completely until you get it back. And it isn't just because your parents inflicted the phone famine on you. If you yourself decided to cut back on your phone usage, it wouldn't be easier. However, if you decided not to just cut back on your phone usage, but you decided to cut back on your phone usage so that you could spend some meaningful time in prayer or Bible study. Now you aren't necessarily consumed by what you can't have. You can focus on what you're getting out of it. You can direct your mind onto something worthy of your focus. Another example, maybe you have the habit of acting like a know-it-all anytime you feel slightly insecure or intimidated and you want to change that. If you decide, I'll stop doing that, you'll end up going right back to those old habits the first time you feel insecure or intimidated. However, you'll have a chance of success if you decide to stop doing that and take practical steps to let Jesus help you change. So maybe you stop acting like a know-it-all and you memorize Philippians 2, or Philippians 4, 6 through 7, and 2 Samuel 22, 2 through 3. And then you recite those verses to yourself every time you feel insecure and intimidated. And you remind yourself that your job isn't to impress everyone else, but God is the impressive hero of this world, and we're just here to point people to the hero. And then whenever you feel insecure, you look at the situation from the point of view of the other person who made you feel insecure and realize they are probably just as insecure and could use someone to reassure them and show them the love of God. Then all of a sudden you have some practical and meaningful steps to fill your life with Jesus Christ to the point that our initial reaction um, to insecurity isn't being a know-it-all. Regardless of what is hindering you from your relationship with God, if you just try to use self-discipline to stop behaving that way, you're going to fail. And if we're all honest, the goal isn't behaving better anyways. The goal is getting closer to our Creator and our Savior. So yes, we need to let go of the things that are hindering us, but we also need to grab onto the things that will help us get closer to Jesus. This principle tells us we can stretch our faith by letting something go, but we have to replace it with the goodness of God. This way, there is not room in our hearts, thoughts, or lives for the hindrance to return because we filled every space of our life with Jesus. This week in small groups, we're going to talk about the five commitments we've been talking about, but I also want you to consider what you need to let go of to stretch your faith. This can be difficult to talk about, but really consider what those things are. I want everyone to at least think of one thing that they should let go of. I can think of like 20 in my life. Um, and in small groups, I wanna challenge you to be vulnerable about 
what needs to change in your life. Some of you may not be struggling with identifying the things you need to let go of, but you can't think of anything practical to grab onto and help you focus on Jesus. Ask your small group for help. That's what this group is for. I hope you and your small group can come up with steps for you to let go and steps to grow closer to Jesus because I want everyone to intentionally try this principle for the next two weeks. Anyone who has tried to let go of something to stretch their faith, they know it isn't easy. But I also know a lot of you know it's possible. Think about a time you were most focused on Jesus. Maybe it was when you were first saved, maybe it was at a retreat, um, maybe it was at camp and you were doing Bible study every day, serving, worshiping, surrounding yourself with him constantly. You probably didn't struggle as much with these hindrances and sin. You weren't entangled and constricted by the hindrance, but you weren't focusing on stopping that hindrance and sin either. Instead, you were simply focused on Jesus, and that's our goal. Even though we want to move on from these hindrances and sins, we don't want to focus our li- uh, we don't want the focus of our lives to be on overcoming those sins. Instead, we just want to focus on and follow Jesus so closely that one day we look around and we realize he let us beyond those hindrances and sins. Wouldn't it be nice to finally move past those sins? Wouldn't it be amazing um, to be so focused on Jesus and stretching your faith that um, he could change and work in your life the way you wanted to? So I have one question for you. What do you have to lose? I'm going to close this out in prayer tonight, but really focus in with your um, small group and consider what you need to let go of. Father God, we come to you um, in this weird virtual world, but we come to you with the same heart and the same gathering and the same mind to ask you to work in our lives. We know that we are imperfect and there are things that we need to change to truly draw closer to you and to show you um show you love the way that we want to show love so god help us to identify those things and then god help us to show you how to latch onto you and trust you so that you can work in our lives because god we've tried many times before and we know we can't do it on our own in your name we pray amen